Good morning, welcome to Dog on the Plot and I am full of the joys of spring this morning. The sun is shining, the birds are singing and it is tomato sowing weekend. So this year I'm going with a whole new load of varieties, so pretty much all new tomatoes this year. And I have been going for the trendy tomatoes, the tomatoes that you see on Instagram, the tomatoes that YouTubers say are the, are the tomatoes that you should be growing. I've been collecting them over the last few months. These are the, the popular kids in school. These are the Beyonce's in the Taylor Swift's of the tomato world. <laughs> I'm recognising there that I have no current cultural reference. But anyway, I picked well-regarded tomatoes, okay? Well-regarded in terms of the way in which they look, they're unusual, but also um, their flavour. And I love the names of these tomatoes. And it there was a thing I saw on Instagram this week, Was it was about um, tell someone your niche without telling them your niche. And I was like, if you said to somebody, oh, Rebel Starfighter Prime, they would just be like, what? You know, are you talking about a transformer? Um, but then somebody in the know would come back to you with a Brad's Atomic Grape. <laughs> so there's a little clue to two of the varieties I'm going to be growing this year. But we're going to talk tomatoes a little bit later in the episode because I've got some other stuff to do first and it's going to be a beautiful day today and a pretty rainy day tomorrow. So, so sowing might happen tomorrow. Today I want to get down to the plot, well walk a dog, pick up some um, grass clippings from the church, then get down to the plot and tackle what's left of the old compost base. What do you think Dory? Does that sound like a good plan? Is it a good plan? Let's go walkies. <laughs> we left the broad beans out overnight, Dory. Uh-oh. How do they look? They look magnificent. <laughs> they look magnificent, Dory. Come on in. Off we go. It's almost too nice to uh, do any work. <laughs> Just kind of want to sit here and enjoy the birds singing and the peace and quiet. There are a few people down here though now. So yeah, plots are plots are waking up. Talking of which, we should look at Mark. Uh, look, well, not look at Mark. Look at Mark's plot and uh, see what he's been up to since his compost delivery. The Dory edging towards that leak bed again. What is it about that leap bed? Oh, she just got in it. <laughs> I saw you, Dory. She moved quick. Are you sitting there ready to be fastened? Hmm? Yeah? That's, uh... Closer, be closer. 
closer. <laughs> Here we go. Right then, Mark, let's see what you've been doing. Oh, <laughs> he's made a nice uh, indent in my path with his wheelbarrow. But uh, here it all is then. There we go. Gosh, it doesn't look much now, does it? Yeah, that once that's spread out, that only really does that one bed. And he's got about four of them to fill. Nothing in this one. He's also started digging in the pond. We'll go there and he's put in two fruit trees. I think this is my sister's area. I think she's going to put wild flowers all around the pond. Oh, actually, maybe some of the compost is in those as well. Oh, so perhaps there is more than just that there. But yeah, my uh, cousin had a delivery from the same people and um, she was just going to get one bag and I said, no, do two because it, that compost, it just does not go as far as you think it will. Um, so I think she was pretty glad that she got two bags um, to fill up those raised beds that I showed you last week. Right then, what are we doing on my plot? Right, okay, so what I've brought down is a load of grass clippings from the church. I've got rabbit poop and bedding from my colleague Jay. And what I'm thinking, I mean, I've got piles and piles of that rabbit bedding over there, um, ready to, to mulch these beds. Um, but what I'm thinking is, if we come to the back of the plot, so this is how we left it last week. So we cleared the three big um, piles of compost and they went into my compost bays. And now we have what was left at the very back of those compost bays, which I think were old uh, piles of compost from previous bays. If I come on over, you will see that it's fairly weedy. It's got the um, willow herb on top. You can see all these roots within it which I believe are bindweed. So my plan of action is to get some of those grass clippings into the compost bays uh, to start activating the compost because not all of it was broken down and um, I'd also put some woody material in there all the cosmos and things um, that I was saving for that dead hedge. Dead hedge is going to have to have a pin in it because I put it in there to sort of aerate because it will cre create gaps in, in the compost that went into the bays. Um, so I want to mix some um, grass clippings into that, get it all activated, get it breaking down a little bit more. This stuff that's remaining here, I think, because it kind of slopes down at the back of the plot, so I think I'm just going to put it all along the back of the plot as um, just a kind of filling in of that gap. Um, and then if bindweed is in it, it can grow up the back of the plot um, and, and stay back there, basically. I probably need to move all these bricks at some point as well. But one thing at a time, there's actually some nettles behind here as well. And they will make excellent activators for the compost. So I could strim some of those out and add them to the compost to break down. And again, get things, get things activated. So that's the plan. Sound like a good plan? Well, that's the plan I'm going with. First, I'm going to finish my cup of tea and hope that this dog shuts up.
well, that's a lot harder work on your own. I mean, you were here, but you must mostly bark to people passing by. Gosh, my back hurts. <laughs> and when you look at it, you'll think, what's she done? <laughs> so every time you're digging a bit, you're hitting something, which jerks your back, uh, and then got to dig out some great brick or slab and, uh, and maneuver that out of the way. But I've got a fairly, well, it's not flat, it's not level, but I've cleared the space. So it'll need leveling off now. And I think it was Pammy who said about at Garden of Whedon, using the bricks that I've dug up um, for the footings of the greenhouse, um, which is a great idea. And I had thought that that could be possible. Uh, I'll need a spirit level, won't I? I have to bring spirit level down. But uh, I don't, <laughs> I'm saying that like the greenhouse is suddenly going to be erected just like that. Uh, but yeah, there's still still quite a ways to go. I think flattening the, the surface is actually going to take quite a bit of work. Um, oh, I was hoping Mark would be down here by now <laughs> and give us a hand. Hey, Dory. Um, but no, should be proud of myself. Yeah, hello Danny. Uh, look at me doing it all by myself. <laughs> so the compost bays went pretty well. Um, obviously I couldn't, because I'd already filled all three, which was a mistake, I probably should have just done the two. Um, so then I had to um, kind of put the grass clippings on, mix them in a bit, like move to one side, put grass clippings in, move a bit further, then do the other way um, to try and work the clippings through as much of the compost that was in the bays as possible. So it hasn't penetrated right down to the bottom, but it, it should, I think, really help that compost. Um, just sort of take it that extra little bit that it needs to, because it's pretty much there. It is pretty much there. But yeah, if I didn't appreciate my cousin helping me last week, which I did, I certainly would now. <laughs> hey, Dory. So I think I'm going to call it a day uh, for down here. Uh, I would just um, thought I should have kept some of those grass clippings for the hotbed at home. And, um, and then I just, um, as I stood here to film, saw that there was in fact a third bag. Um, so that's really good. I shall take that home and add it to the hotbed. Um, that's a win. I think I should end on a win. I'm pretty proud of what I've achieved today. Um, it, didn't look, it doesn't look like a lot, felt like a lot. So yeah, it's only about half past 12, so I'll head home, have some lunch, and then we've got the rest of the day for the garden. back in the greenhouse had a rest had some lunch um, the sun has gone and we've had some spots of rain so I think I called it at the right moment now the first thing I want to do this afternoon is uh, check in on the dahlias now if you remember we did the sandwich bag method of starting off our dahlias and it's been going rather well so uh, for instance there we go that one's got a lovely shoot coming off of it not quite ready to be um, taken off yet, I don't think. Others are doing less, but things are happening. Now, the reason I have these out as well is because I've got another two dahlias to plant. So remember I was being really good and hadn't bought any new dahlias. Well, Claire must feel, felt sorry for me at the uh, veg plot thickens and she has sent me two absolutely stunning varieties of dahlia. One is Claire Obscure for, um, obvious reasons coming from Claire. Um, the other one is Pablo, which is the name of her horse. And um, I'm going to pop these up in exactly the same way that I did these ones. 
Um, and I'm going to emphasize this time that I don't think you should water the soil, which I didn't do and everything has been fine. But uh, one of my colleagues at work, Kristen, um, her, she did the same thing and hers have been going moldy and she watered the soil that they went into. So I've done the same thing I did last time, which is just rinse the baggie. So there is some moisture within there. And then the rest of the moisture just comes directly from the bagged compost. So I'm gonna do the same thing again, which is put a little bit of soil in the bottom, pop my dahlia in, put enough around it, just so that the top of the dahlia tubers are exposed. And then it's going in with the rest of them back into the house where they keep warm and um, yeah, hopefully have lots of lovely dahlia shoots to create multiple plants this year. So a massive thank you to Claire for sending me those. Um, they look absolutely gorgeous. I can't wait to see them. Okay, next on the agenda is um, that pile of seeds that I identified that needed sowing last week. And I've now arranged them into three categories. The first are the ones that can be direct sown. Apparently beetroot Crosby's Egyptian uh, can be sown from March outdoors and uh, spinach Amelia and F1 can be sown outdoors from February to March. So those two I'm putting aside for, for going directly outside. Then I've got three that are going to need the propagator. Randomly, one of those is a spinach. It's called Malabar Red. This one can be um, planted indoors in pots. I think sometimes spinach does better um, when it is direct sown, but it, this one says it does do well in pots. And, um, but it says, yeah, germinate between 21 and 24 degrees C. Celeriac, okay. Well, I am still growing celeriac. It's in the um, beds here and at the allotment, um, but nevertheless, on to, to, on to the next batch. Uh, I'm using the same variety as last year, which is brilliant. And um, I, have, I must have sown these way too late last year. And, and then my cousin ended up giving me hers, didn't she? So yeah, anyway. Let's that, that's, that's try and get Solaria right this year. And apparently that one's 18 degrees. And then another failure from last year, the artichoke. Um, just dumped those last week uh, after um, uh, not planting them out and then them dying in their pots. Uh, so again, let's, let's give it another go. And this can be sown indoors February to March and prefers a temperature of up to 20 degrees Celsius. So those are the three that are going in the propagator. And then <laughs> we've got this pile, um, which are to be sown and then uh, just kept indoors on the sunny windowsill. So they only need sort of room temperature to get them going. Uh, one of which is a beetroot, Shogia. Um, one of my favourite beetroots. I've got turnips, Tokyo Cross. I've got celery, giant red. I think that's well out of date, but um, we'll give it a go. Now is the time to start your Florence fennel. According to Charles Downey, it was actually last month. So I'm going to get some of those on the go. I've got my two kohlrabis. I've done these before. I've got the purple Vienna, which did great last year. I've also got the giant, enormous kohlrabi. I love that it needs both of those. It's, oh no, gigant enormous. <laughs> Okay, not, not quite. Um, Calabrese. So I'm going to start with the Calabrese. The sprouting varieties, I'm going to wait another month. Um, cabbages, my early cabbages are Greyhound, um, Golden Acre. That is the one that I bought this year because I think it will just be like a standard, nice, uh, crunchy white cabbage that you can use for like coleslaws and things. Two cauliflowers all year round. Uh, and the other one is the graffiti, which has uh, the purple head. So uh, I'm gonna give that one a go. And then my two herbs to start are parsley and coriander. Dill is another herb that you can start right now, but 
I, I couldn't believe it either. I am out of dill. It's not that I'm out of dill, it's that there is a seed that I don't have. I didn't think there was any seed that I did not have. A variety of, at least. Um, but apparently, no, I used all my dill last year and didn't remember to um, buy more. But Mark ha apparently has loads, so he's going to lend me some dill. And um, yeah, so until, until we do tomatoes later, I'm going to get on with sowing these. That's the beetroot and spinach direct sown. Hellebore's gone in. Uh, I've put some pulmonary in, uh, some bits of wild garlic, and I've, I've done the hotbed. So I've added the um, grass clippings to the hotbed. And I am saying, day done. <laughs> Time for a bath. I will catch you tomorrow.
happy Sunday. It's actually Sunday evening and I'm getting ready to uh, close all up. Um, we had a lovely walk this morning down the canal and um, just did a couple of quick jobs in the greenhouse when we got back. You may notice them in the background. One is there and one is there. <laughs> I have floating shelves! As you know, uh, I have had a mouse problem in the greenhouse. Um, not only have they been in the peas and the broad beans, but last night they had a rummage around in my freshly sown lettuces as well. So um, I needed to do something about that. And um, what I've been seeing other people do is create these floating shelves in their greenhouse. Now, there may be a little mistake with my floating shelf here, which I'll show you in a moment. But first, how I did it. Well, Ali and Trisha at the Right Pair Plot sent me a little package, after listening to me moan about these mice for so long, <laughs> sent me a little passage of these little clips that you can use in the greenhouse. Now, actually, they are a little bit small for the channels in my greenhouse. Um, they may be good for the ones in the... Um, allotment greenhouse though however they have worked so far it's still up um so i think they're okay but if i'm going to buy some more i'm going to look for um slightly larger ones for for this greenhouse so thank you to ali and trisha for sending me those and coming to my rescue in terms of the mice now i didn't film this because the other person who came to my rescue was liam because as i've mentioned before i am a weak person and um i couldn't hand tighten them enough especially is that dory peeing in the background Never work with animals. Um, I couldn't hand tighten them and um, all my little wrenchy things, is that what you would call that? Uh, didn't fit the bolt size. So Liam to the rescue there and he's just put up the um, little bits and then I used um, this poly polypropylene twine um, to actually uh, use as the string. And it's just one of the uh, trays that you use to water and uh, for that one. And this, I've directly suspended the guttering that the peas are in. And instead of using the little clips for that, I've actually got a piece of wire that is attached to the greenhouse frame. Um, so it's quite strong as opposed to the bamboo canes. And um, so I've just suspended that there. Now, the fun part will be when we come back in the morning and see if one, they're all still <laughs> hanging and two if the mouse has been clever enough to to get in because this one is a little bit close to uh the mini flimsy greenhouse and i think the mouse could probably go up there and jump on <laughs> oh well if, if it doesn't work i'll have to move it forward a little bit more but i'm really super pleased with that so thank you to ali and trish thank you to liam and uh yeah we'll check in in the morning and see if everything is still there i'm at work monday tuesday it's Tomato Tuesday. Good morning. It's finally time. We're going to sow some tomatoes. <laughs> if you had uh, rather given up hope on us ever getting to the tomatoes, then you're not alone because this is not Tomato Tuesday. In fact, this is Wednesday, <laughs> but it is the spring equinox. It's the 20th of March today. And it does seem rather fitting that we should be doing our tomatoes on the first day of spring. Now, as I said in the intro, I am growing trendy tomatoes this year and they're from a variety of places. But I want to give a shout out to Ali and Trisha of the Right Pear Plot um, because they provided quite a few of these seeds. They're also edging ever so, ever so closely to a thousand subs. So if you haven't subbed with Ali and Trisha at the Right Pear Plot yet, head over there at the end of this video and uh, give them a sub. The other place that my seeds predominantly came from is um, Seed Envy, um, which is a seed shop run by Mrs. R Garden Life on Instagram. And she grows tomatoes, she saves the seeds and she sells them online. So it's like a little cottage industry and I'm pleased to support her little shop. And the other place I got some tomatoes from oh, was my Seed Crypt Santa. Uh, on Instagram this year. So they're from a variety of places. Um, none of them have pictures on the packets, which is slightly annoying because now I'm going to have to add pictures during the editing process and that's going to take a while. The things I do for you, hey? Um, but there's been a lot of preparation going on in the background. So I have um, got my trays. I've cleaned them. I don't usually do that, but for tomatoes, clean trays. Um, and I've also organized my seeds into categories 
and I've already written my labels. What was that? I don't know. Was it the mouse? Could have been the mouse. It's in here with me. Um, but speaking of which, da 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 da, da 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 da, still suspended. <laughs> They've stayed up, which is great news. Um, anyway, back to tomatoes. So I'm going to go through my varieties here and then get sewing. Um, I've divided them into cherry cooking, uh, beef steak, and regular salad tomatoes. So let's start with the first, and they're all in threes for some reason. <laughs> well, no, I know the reason they're in threes is because I'm going to plant them in here i'm going to do three in each tray and i think i'm going to do three of each seed because there are there are 18 varieties here <laughs> that's a lot more than i've ever sown before um perhaps i had like i don't know less than 10 probably varieties last year um but yeah 18 this year um so i'm going to do um i think three of each so that i get at least one of each plant that's my aim to have at least one of each of these plants because basically what i want to do is taste test the whole lot so we did a taste testing last year and um my tomatoes came up a bit short really in in the taste testing so this year i'm going all out i want to want to blow the socks off my family with these tomatoes right i'm starting with the beef steak and um, cooking ones. So I didn't realize that tomato pork chop, and I think this is the only one that does have a picture. There we go, save me a job there. Um, that's a beef steak tomato. Um, black crim, I also didn't realize was a beef steak. That was my secret Santa one from Growbrust Greenhouse. And then my cooking one is from the Seed Saving Network, and that is tomato midnight Roma. Some very noisy seagulls about they're interested in the tomatoes um so that's my first three my next three so i've got a um, midnight roma and black crim on there but my next three are kind of the black straw uh strawberries one of them is strawberry uh black tomatoes so black strawberry tomato uh i've got black beauty and I've got black trefelli, which is one of the Ali and Trish ones. Uh, excited about all of these. Um, these were all on my list. And so I keep a list of um, things on my phone that I come across and I'm like, I want that. And actually I got all the tomatoes on my list this year with the exception of Atomic Sunset, um, which I think is a more US based tomato. Um, so if any of my viewers in the US have Atomic Sunset, then I'm on the lookout. So, but they're my black tomatoes. Uh, then I've got some cherries. So for my cherries, um, I've got Sun Gold and Honeycomb, and I want to compare those, okay? Because Sun Gold, we all know, is the sweetest, most lovely tomato, and I did grow those last year. This is one of the few ones um, that I'm regrowing, but I'm regrowing it in order to compare it with Honeycomb, which is the new contender, um, the rival to Sun Gold. Um, and then I've got a red um, cherry, which is Garnet, and um, this one I've heard really good things about as well. Okay, more cherries. Um, this one uh, I mentioned earlier is Brad's Atomic Grape. Um, that one's been on my list for a while, as has Barry's Crazy Cherry. These are, um, these are very popular tomatoes and I wanna try them. I wanna know what all the fuss is about. Um, the outlier I've got is blueberry tomato, which is another seed NV1. And I think I just, I haven't heard anything about this. I just saw it on the webpage when I was buying the others. And I thought, oh, I wanna give that one a go. So we, those are my three other cherries. Now we're into the more of the salad uh, tomatoes. And for this, I have um, crushed heart. And that may be one that ends up outside. Although Ali has just told me that she didn't have very good germination on this one. So we'll see. Um, the other one is indigo apple. And I've also, the one that I picked from my King Seed order is tomato zlatava, um, which is orange on the outside and red like a blood orange on the inside. I mean, it just looks stunning. And you eat with your eyes, don't you? I'm hoping it will taste good too. It does say the excellent flavour, but also eye appeal. <laughs> okay, so these are my, my last three. And um, one is um, old German tomato. These are still salad tomatoes. And this is one um, that came free with the Seed Envy order. So I'm going to give that a go. It's not one I know anything about. Just giving it a go. Um, now the other two, definitely from my list. 
Rebel Starfighter Prime, which I mentioned earlier. Um, another one that's very popular. Um, you see it on social media all the time. Really want to try that one. And then the top tomato of both um, Jesse and Chris uh, is Alice's Dream Tomato. And um, I was torn between this and the um, Anis Noir, and, um, but it seems like Alice's Dream pips Anis Noir, so I'm going with that one. Um, this is probably the tomato I am most excited about. So there we go, there are my 18 varieties of tomato. And as I say, my aim is to get one at least of each. I think I fit 23 tomatoes in the greenhouse here last year. I was ruthless on the pruning so that, um, and taking off the side shoots. All of these are indeterminate as well, so they will be growing up one uh, as one um, leader. And they fit, they did fit. Uh, but I will hopefully, have the greenhouse on the plot this year so if more of these germinate i'm not going to get rid of them um i will uh hopefully have another greenhouse full of tomatoes on the plot and as i say crushed heart can potentially go out into the garden as well oh actually there's three more that i need to show you one sec I had almost forgotten about these ones, even though I wrote the labels for them yesterday. These aren't tomatoes, these are tomatillos or Mexican tomatoes. And I've got three varieties of these as well. I've got the Real Seeds Purple Green Tomatillo and the Tomatillo Pineapple, both of which I grew last year in the greenhouse in pots. Um, <laughs> I mean, they were part of the widespread abuse of tomatoes and chili plants and peppers last year. So they didn't do brilliantly, but I did have a few of them, particularly the pineapple one. And oh my God, they were so good. So good. Not for Liam. I gave him one and he felt like I was trying to poison him, but I thought they were delicious. So I'm growing those again this year. And my third one is allotment tomatillos. <laughs> and this is because there are a couple of plots on our site uh, where the holders grow absolutely enormous tomatillo plants and they are so prolific and I went um, I went surreptitiously buy one um, in the autumn and there were some fruits on the floor and nothing had been picked and that plot looked pretty overgrown and neglected so I helped myself um, to a couple of the ones on the floor so that I could save some seed because clearly they do well on our site. So these are other ones that I'm thinking will do okay outside because tomatillos, and I think I'm right in saying this, don't get blight. So tomatillos, um, they look like the caped gooseberry that we've been growing. We started, was it last week or the week before? all germinated can't remember i've told you that but last week i think i did actually i'm still so excited about it and of course they've got more cape uh, cape gooseberries from robin at robin gardens and claire at the veg plot thickens so we're probably going to be growing more of those um but also the tomatillos and yeah they're, they're, they're the same they're kind of in that papery little husk and then you open it up and the fruit is inside and um yeah, I think with the tomatillos, they're really good for making sauces and things because they're not as sweet as uh, as regular tomatoes. But anyway, add those to what I'm sowing this morning. So on to sowing. I am sowing in these trays, um, much like I did the chilies and the peppers. I'm going to do three varieties in a row, uh, three of each seed. And um, I am just um, going straight ahead and sowing them. I'm not pre-chitting, I'm not soaking or anything like that with the tomatoes. I haven't had issues with tomato germination in the past. So I am just going for a direct sow into these trays, um, small covering of compost on top, a good water, and then into the propagator. And that's the key, of course, for tomatoes is that they do need warmth to germinate, particularly um, planting them in March and uh, even though we are in spring now and I noted on the um, thermometer when I came in today that last night it didn't drop below 10 degrees in the greenhouse which is exciting the plants should be loving that that extra warmth okay I'm gonna get cracking on doing this sewing and I shall catch you next week